A Southworth duplex boiler feed pump service, part 8. The repairs to the pump are now completed. I need to see it running using live steam. This is a steam test, although the boiler is far too small for this type of pump. In this episode, I will point out one or two shortcomings in the design of these pumps. But to start with, I'm looking at the boiler. It's a great little boiler as this, but it is just what I've said, a little boiler, very small. It will just about run a Sirius steam engine, which has two cylinders, but they are single acting. This Sirius doesn't need much steam to make it go. This is running on about £20 per square inch. It's time now to connect this boiler to the Southworth duplex boiler feed pump. I'm using silicone rubber tubing again for this test because it's only short and it's not going to be at a very high pressure. I also used a piece of silicone rubber tubing and a wire clip for both the gas and water connections. The gas I'm going to use to run the boiler is some Coleman 70% butane, 30% propane mix. I found this gas valve in a box of parts. I don't know where it came from and I don't know how good it is. I fitted the piece of silicone rubber tubing to it and secured it with a spring clip. Here's a setup and it's just about ready to go. All I need to do is open the gas valve and light the burner. And I almost forgot I need to fill the plastic tub with some water so that the pump will have something to pump. It's not a good idea to ever run these pumps without water because the O-rings in the water cylinders will wear out really quickly. I'm part filling this plastic tub with some water from the kettle. It's not hot, it's just the way that I carried it from the kitchen into the workshop. I'm also filling the small tank that allows me to pump water into the boiler. I'm going to use the hand pump for this, not the Southworth pump, but unfortunately the hand pump is currently stuck. Time for a bit of fire. I opened the gas valve and quickly lit the burner. Immediately I notice that there is a strong smell of gas coming from the gas valve, so it's time to turn it off, remove the butane tank from the valve and have a look at it. I think this valve was sent to me with a few of the Chinese bits and pieces a while ago and it's really badly made. The thread on the valve is a rattle fit in the housing. I couldn't see much in the way of an o-ring in there. The union nut seemed to just contain some sealing compound so I'm fitting it with an o-ring, which should seal it because I do not wish to spontaneously combust this morning. This poor quality gas tap is now gas tight. Time now for take two. This really nice small boiler is capable of generating quite a lot of steam, but not with this burner that I use. It's a very small burner and it's quiet. While I'm waiting for some steam to appear, I think it's a good idea to fill the displacement lubricator. I have to say that I do like the design of the cap on this. After about 20 minutes, some pressure appeared on the pressure gauge. I immediately noticed the usual problem. The hand pump fitted to this little plant is stuck. This is usually due to the inlet ball being stuck on the seat, owing to the residue in the water drying out whilst it's been in storage. And now it's top tip time. Here is a very simple fix if your balls get stuck. Use a small blowtorch to apply some localised heat to the valve chamber. I'm using this very small blowtorch just to warm the pump up, particularly around the valve chamber area, and immediately the ball frees itself, and now the pump works once again. Operating the pump to make sure it works is fine, but it's not a good idea when I'm trying to raise steam on a boiler with a very small burner. There's a bit of a problem with this pump. I wasn't going to mention it, but this is for the benefit of the owner. Normally, steam cylinders are always fitted with some sort of a drainage system called drain cocks or drain taps or cylinder drains or whatever you want to call them. The first steam that arrives in a cylinder immediately condenses to water and this can cause hydraulic lock, which in larger engines is quite serious. It can easily blow the front cylinder cover off, but at a much higher pressure than this. As I open the steam valve, steam goes to the cylinder and some of it comes out of the exhaust port. I made this part look easy.
but in reality, to start the pump, it needed a helping hand because the pressure is very low. £20 per square inch will run this pump, but only when it's thoroughly warmed up and running. I'll try the pump again and see what happens. Not only can you hear how wet the pump sounds, you can see the water coming out of the exhaust port, and also water is blowing from both of the rear gaskets on the steam cylinders. These are the original gaskets and I left them alone for a reason. The simple answer is, the water from the condensed steam has to get out of the cylinder and this, as usual, is doing it via the gaskets. This is a bit of a design fault with this engine. Later on in this video I'll show a couple of engines like this that have been modified to incorporate drain cocks. I sat patiently and watched the pressure gauge until the needle pointed at 60 psi. I opened the steam tap and this happened. The problem is that within seconds the boiler pressure had dropped back down to about 20 psi and the pump stopped. The point is, I now know it will run on steam. I always did know it was going to run on steam, but I wanted to show it like this for the benefit of the owner of the engine. Finally, to round off this series, I would like to show you a couple of other Southworth duplex pumps. This one uses four pieces of pipe from each end of the steam cylinder to a central tap to drain everything at the same time. In exactly the same way as with the pump I've been working on, this one is connected to a water supply. This engine has a tap fitted in the circuit so you can actually pressurise the water by closing the valve a bit. And while on the subject of taps, you will notice this engine also makes a tapping sound. But that's okay, it works fine anyway. The best pump of all is the last one. This pump was built by a professional, but as you can see, it's still leaking a bit. It sounds like a locomotive. It's good, doesn't it? Yeah. With very even valves then. This is a brand new pump built by my friend Roger, and he brought it round so we could test it. If you look closely at this pump, you will see that it is also fitted with drain cocks. One drain cock at each side on the front part of the cylinder, and another two in the centre of the cylinder covers at the other end. And guess what? These leak as well. Some water leakage from pumps like this is fairly inevitable. I've worked on a few of them over the years. I have a 12 inch long south of pump and that also leaks when it first starts running. This one is okay. It will be better when the glands wear a bit to let some more water out, but it runs quite well. After this steam test, I did make some more minor adjustments to equalise the travel of both of the piston rods. And that concludes the series. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.